So say what you want about the six god or wheelchair Jimmy, but the reality is wherever Drake goes, a trail of violence usually follows. Now it might just be that he's a target of a lot of unwanted attention given he's one of the biggest stars in rap, or maybe Drake's mob ties aren't just lyrics in a song. In March of 2018, Delia nightclub in LA was packed with celebrities turning up for the night. Some of the guests in attendance included Odell Beckham Jr., Younz Benjima, a former boxer who'd been dating Kourtney Kardashian, and Drake, all of whom were enjoying the club from the VIP section. Things went left when Summer Rae, then an up-and-coming IG model, approached VIP and asked to be let in. Summer Rae being, well, Summer Rae was welcome to the section, but her boyfriend at the time, Bennett Sipes, was flat out rejected by Drake. The thing about Sipes is that he actually worked in Delia as a server, but was partying at the club on his night off. Needless to say, Drake letting in Sipes' model girlfriend and then rejecting him definitely sent a message. An argument broke out that quickly escalated, and that's when Drake allegedly gave his crew the throat slash gesture which witnesses interpreted as a green light for his entourage to give Sipes a beatdown. Sipes was shoved out the back of the club and then got stomped out by members of Drake's team and Younz Benjima. As all this broke out, Drake was seen in the video observing the whole thing go down and witnesses said it was almost as if it was done for entertainment. Drake and Odell eventually got hit by a lawsuit from Sipes for their role in the beating. It also came out that Drake had built close ties with the owner of Delia, a company called the H. Wood Group. According to an insider report, H. Wood Group had a reputation for bending the law and putting employees in shady situations in order to cater to their celebrity clientele. And at the top of their A-list clientele was Drizzy himself. Now Drake has dropped hints about street affiliations throughout his lyrics. His song Mob Ties is a thinly veiled reference to the bond he has with Jay Prince, long considered to be the most feared man in hip hop. Jay Prince was the guy who stepped in to settle beasts Drake had with Puff Daddy, Pusha T, and Kanye, which just goes to show the amount of influence this man has. Part of the reason why Drake's highly publicized beef with Pusha T didn't escalate any further was because Jay Prince stepped in and called an end to the back and forth. It's pretty much well known that any rapper coming up through Houston is supposed to check in with Jay Prince and his Mob Ties crews in order to ensure the security. The fact that Jay Prince's team rides so heavily for Drake signifies just how deep their business and street connections are. One of the most well-known people in Drake's inner circle is Chubbs, who is routinely referred to as his muscle and head of security. Chubbs has a deep history in the streets, stemming from a crew he used to run with on Toronto's east side. Drake has routinely referred to Chubbs as the member of the team that would catch a body for him. And Chubbs has even backed it up himself, saying in an interview, I'm not ever going to let nothing happen to him. There's rumors that Chubbs ran up on people in Toronto wearing anti-Drake clothing and just, just laid it down on them, just smacked the hell out of them. And it's pretty much common knowledge that Chubbs rides for Drake no matter what. Chubbs was famously accused for beating up Detail, a music producer who refused to offer a work exclusively for Drake. In retaliation, Detail was invited to Drake's Calabasas mansion, where Chubbs allegedly met him in the door and broke his jaw. Drake and Chubbs were also co-owners of Pick 6, a classy downtown Toronto sports bar where a 28-year-old man named Jaden Jackson was brutally murdered in 2018. Jackson had been partying at a private event hosted at the restaurant when he left with a young woman. As he was leaving, a black Civic spun around to pull up on Jackson. Jackson got spooked by whoever he saw in the car and took off running, while two gunmen jumped out and chased him into a parking garage, shooting him 20 times. All of this was caught on video and it looks like gangland hit. Now Drake has no affiliation with Jackson and never released a statement about the murder. And to be honest, there's no real need to. Drake wasn't at the party when Jackson got shot. He has no relation to the victim whatsoever, but the killing did put a dark cloud over pick six, which later closed in 2020. Baka Not Nice is another notorious member of Drake's inner circle. Baka allegedly used to run with Chubbs and he served time for armed robbery, assault and various weapons charges. Baca even got locked up for human trafficking charges in 2014 under accusations that he forced a 22 year old woman into prostitution and then assaulted her. Drake name drugs Baca frequently, implying that Baca would be quick to settle any beef with violence. Rumor has it that Drake went to Baca earlier in his career to help deal with a local artist who he had problems with. Drake declared on Know Yourself that he might declare it a holiday when Baca gets on the road. In true to form, Drake helped boost Baca's music when he got out of jail in 2015, signing him to the label OVO and using him for background vocals on his projects. 
A lot of the street stuff, unfortunately, is bounce and in tragedy. And that's exactly what happened to one of Drake's close friends, Anthony Soares, better known as Fifth. In September of 2017, Fifth was walking into his apartment complex when two masked men ran up on him, gunning him down in the lobby. The footage was absolutely brutal. You can actually see one of the shooters fire point blank on Fifth's body before wiping his fingerprints off the door handle. The police even went ahead and called the murder a case of overkill. Needless to say, Drake was distraught over the killing of one of his close friends. He paid tribute to him by putting Fist's face in the back of the cover of Dark Lane demo tapes, and he was a pallbearer at Fist's funeral. Nobody was ever arrested for Fist's murder, and the police expressed irritation that Drake didn't use his platform to try and get witnesses to come forward. So the question is, just how deep in this world is Drake? There's definitely no denying that he has a team around him ready to push the button in case shit goes down. And it is also clear that Drake has no problem using his crew against anybody who might disrespect him. Most of these guys' real dirty work happened during Drake's come up though, so they probably didn't have much to stress about during these days. And to whether or not Drake's an actual mob boss, that's for you to decide.